Uh, welcome, folks, to the 17th of May, Aries Working Group Call. We have some good stuff under discussion today. We're going to touch lightly on the uh, unqualified did, uh, pure did stuff, um, and then the larger amount of discussion today we anticipate being around the Open Wallet Foundation and the circumstances there. Um, and so, um, uh, should be a good call. This is a hyperledger call. So the antitrust policy and the code of conduct both linked here um, uh, are in effect. Um, and if you uh, have concerns, please reach out to uh, Stephen or I or any of the hyperledger staff, and uh, and they will uh, we will help you with that and and solve the issue. Um, you're welcome to add yourself to the attendees list. The link I'm putting again in the chat um, and to uh, the video allowed. Oh, that wasn't on purpose. Yeah, I usually turn video recording off on Hyperledger calls because it makes the recording size huge. If you want, I will turn on video. No, it's okay if uh, if there's good reason for it. Um, okay. Uh, so please add you. Actually, today, if you wouldn't mind adding yourself to the attendees list, we have some fairly important stuff under discussion. And so um, logging in and adding yourself to the list uh, will be very helpful, and I should be in edit mode so that that's more updated. Um, that will uh, that will help us um, with logistics uh, surrounding our conversation today. So uh, where it usually doesn't matter quite as much, today is a little bit more important. Um, is there anyone here that is uh, that uh, would like to introduce themselves, either uh, new or um, or returning, and would like to do so? Uh, Rai, why don't you actually, since um, since not everyone knows who you are. Hi, I'm Ry Jones. Uh, I work for the Linux Foundation. I'm a community architect for Hyperledger, and uh, that's I, I usually run the talk meetings and stuff like that. And uh, that's who I am, and that's what I do. Thanks for being here, Ry. And anyone else that would like to? Awesome. Uh, glad you're all here. I see many, many familiar names, and I'm, and I'm grateful for you being here. Um, uh, we have on the announcements here, I've got the, the uh, Dice Europe um, in June um, is here. Also, this week, or is it next week, is, um, is uh, in Vegas, uh, is, I'm blanking on the name of the conference. Who's got it for me? Um, at any worse, it's I, it's uh I think it's first of June or something. It's right over thirties of thirty first of May and June first. All right. And, and at the and same time, day. in Helsinki is my data conference. What's with doubling up on all the conference dates? We just had this last week with uh with the open source conference and and uh, and EIC. That's funny. Uh, th thank you. Um, so uh, lots going on. Uh, someone added the hackathon here. Is there um some context still on there? The, the did hack XYZ? Uh, yes, I added that. Context? Uh, yeah, so a bunch of people, um, including Brian Richter here in, um, uh, here in Victoria, um, organized, uh, starting from the last IAW, a hackathon that's coming up uh, June, the first week of June. Um, he reached out to me and Sam, I sent you a note today, which is why you haven't seen this yet, probably um, to, to answer questions from participants in Aries, um, case questions as they are working on the hackathon. So um, I, I'm happy to take lead on that, but appreciate if someone, if there was a developer that could um, sort of be second level support. So if anyone would like to volunteer to help me with that, I would appreciate it. An area developer. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I'm assuming the, de the, the date details are, are on the link. Yeah, so that did the did hack is the background of it. Um, I've asked for a bit more detail um about exactly what days we would be needed and what and which discord channel will mo monitor and stuff like that but basically it's just a matter of sort of tracking that 
that's something that I can chase internally for our team here to, to, to help you back up. Okay. So I'll, I'll also, I'll see if I can find someone as well, but uh, I'll again, see. I don't expect a lot to be too much, but just to be able to answer a few questions and, and at a higher level than, or a lower level than I could on, you know, um, the other thing that I realized I should mention is we do have the non creds um, workshop next week. I think most here probably don't need to be part of that because they know what a non creds is and how it works. we are having the non creds workshop coming up um, May thirty first. That's a training, uh, right? Is that? Uh, yeah, that's a. Um, there'll be uh, about three hours, three and a half hours, something like that of 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 detail and we've got a couple of plans for a couple of hands-on exercises to get people used to creating a schema doing some um some requests and then um some uh work on um how to um how to interface and on creds with other ledgers um so the ledger agnostic nature of an on creds excellent so um, that I thought was pretty cool today. I saw on Discord. I don't know if um, Patrick Saint Louis is here, but he he's from ID Labs uh, here in Canada. He did a issuance of uh, its, um, credential formatted in W three C format into the Verus One wallet, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, using Chappie. Nice. Which is pretty cool. That is cool. That might be worth a demo yeah. here uh, coming up. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think we'll have time today, nor is this sufficient warning for that sort of a thing. But uh, but no, uh, perhaps uh, that, next week. I just saw that today, but just thought it was pretty cool to announce. That's very cool to see someone doing that. Uh, will you chase that for a demo next week, Stephen, to see if that's possible? Um, yeah, yeah, I'll see about that. Awesome. Cool. Excellent. Any other announcements? It's pretty interesting being time zone and, you know, having this AM call from the West Coast at 10 in the That's not really an announcement, but I thought I'd share. The what? What's going on? <laughs> what was, what did you, Eastern, what was this? Uh, time zone and it's not 7 AM and I'm not just waking up. It's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> that is cool. We should all just relocate farther east because that solves the early problem. Um, uh, cool. Okay. Uh, any? It's been so. It's been two weeks. Last uh, one was uh, canceled for um, meeting or for conference attendee uh, reasons. Um, is there any uh, release status or work updates that folks want to share about areas related projects? Uh, I can uh, give an update on uh, um, EFJ. It's been a while since I've attended this call. So um, um, I think still almost ready for the 0 for 0 release. Um, whole uh, ledger agnostic anoncred shared components included with that. Um, and we've recently now started development on um, also supporting the other OpenID protocols. So PSYOP v2, OpenID for VP, um, and also supporting JWT VCs. Um, so, um, yeah, a lot of new stuff being added. That's fantastic. Um, that will, uh, that will help, uh, context for the discussion a little bit later. So I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, any other work updates? Uh, awesome. Okay, uh, so we have three topics that I, I organized it this way to leave the um, uh, to leave the main discussion uh, towards the end, and so I'd really like to just lightly uh, touch on on this stuff here. Um, there's um, um, I don't see Alex here today. Um, Alex had uh, had volunteered uh, and had done some work um, here. Um, on the the did peer method three, uh, and here's some clarifications as described. Um, method three is a is a short uh, shorter synonym for method two, uh, um, that uh, that allows for parties that already know each other to revert back to a synonym uh, for brevity in the messages. 
uh, it makes them a little smaller because you're not including everything the entire time, but uh, but is linkable, um, you know, hashes involved, for example, and so you can be sure that it's the same thing. Um, so uh, I, I don't know that there's a lot of discussion here, but I want to call attention here for people to review uh, the his proposed. This is uh, this is over on the on the the peer did method spec, um, but uh, but wanted to raise awareness here uh, because of our interests, and so definitely take a look there uh, if you uh, to see if you have any concerns or, or how that uh, or how that's proceeding over there, uh, Stephen. Um, can you go back to that um, showing? Is that all that's there? No, no. This was just the most recent changes since oh, the last okay. time I had viewed it, which is because Daniel had said, "Well, can you, can you add some context about why?" And this is his added context about why. The, okay. Let me let me let me look at a a better diff. Um, he has a lot of uh, larger stuff in here. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Good. <laughs> that was scary because it was like, mm, that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. No. Um, and so this has been through a little bit of review, but uh, but this okay. is something that, uh, that is important to get right. Um, um, and so uh, please, please do review. I um, mean, that links in the in the agenda there. Um, anything more about the, the did peer stuff specifically? Uh, method three, I should call out since I have two agenda items. Uh, your hand's still up, Stephen. Was that an accident? Okay. So uh, next is um, there is an implementation uh, of a conversion between the historic unqualified dids um, and uh, and uh, did peer uh, method two baked into AFJ. Um, and I had reached out to Timo, and he had mentioned that. Um, that a little bit of shoring up would needed uh, to be done to make sure that this is uh, this is a canonical meaning stuff gets added the right way. Um, but then the, what we need is a community is an RFC that describes this translation um, so that we can uh, we can have uh, you know authoritative documentation for it um, and then we can consider that for something like a communicated uh, community coordinated update to to uh, to put the unqualified dids uh, the usage of unqualified dids in the ground. Uh, once and for all, we should have done this a long time ago. Better late than never. Uh, Timo, I was just about to ask you for wisdom, so please. Um, yeah, so um, an issue um, with the approach we have in AFJ is that like there is no canonicalization scheme for did pair, um, and there. So that's the main issue, like with if we were to use did pair one, because like you create a hash of the did document, and to do that you need to have a consistent input, because otherwise the hash will be different. Um, we don't have that issue with um, method two per se, but um, like the services are in the end encoded as um, JSON um, or like base sixty four encoded, I think, um, which means there is room for differences um, and that can, can depend on like the JSON serialization, deserialization um, implementation. I think like across JavaScript implementations, it will be very similar because they use the same JSON serialization, deserialization algorithm, but across languages that can and uh, like JSON libraries that can differ. So we will need to define like a um, canonicalization scheme, which can add a lot of complexity here. It can, but it's simpler than all of the other options is kind of what we've come to. And so um, the and it may be given that this is not canonicalization of JSON generally speaking, but uh, but but just the specific stuff we're talking about um, that uh, that it may be uh, worth um, concatenating the string together in the right way to force the the order of the of the items in in the JSON to be predictable. Um, so that that works. It, it also matters because did peer two allows multiple elements to exist um, in the in the did, um, and it doesn't specify what order they must be in. Um, and so uh, the other order of canonicalization needed here is to make sure that like um, that there's a, a regular way that we translate. Um, because this is coming just from those historic, uh, you know, did uh, uh, libindi based dids, um, we. Uh, we don't have to solve this generally just for this very narrow purpose. And and then once this is done and we make that translation, we're like, we'll never work with those again. Um, and so I'm hoping that the limited nature of how we accomplish this can uh, can make that happen. Is that, that make, like, yeah. yeah, no, no, I was making it more complex in my head. Uh, 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 yeah, that makes it, sense. 
and I uh, admit that concatenating strings together to predictably canonicalize JSON is undesirable, generally speaking, but we also have a very narrow application here. So I, I wanted to call out that like, the important thing is, is that it's simple as possible, um, given the narrow constraints of doing this that we that we're attempting to do. But it seemed like doing this, since there is already an implementation of this sort of a thing, that starting from there rather than independently developing some way of doing this was much smarter. Um, we have some wisdom in the implementation, for example, that uh, that can be there, and this can serve, um, you know, perhaps with some updates as you're describing. But this could serve as a is a is a code example of of doing such. Uh, Stephen, so uh, <clears throat> really hacky. One thing we could do is define did peer three such that it can be either a shortened version of did peer two or um an existing did <laughs> and that would allow conversion and and qualification i don't know if we want to go to that but but we could actually do it because the the, re, the thing we thought of was oh we need some other did prefix so we could build it into that but i don't know maybe that's too ugly um certainly the the canonicalization problem just to be clear it's not a Peer two and three, like very clear, I think. It's only unqualified that we have today into something else. Stephen, you skipped okay. a little there, but I think what you said oh. was is we're not talking about the transition between did method numalgo two and numalgo three. We're just talking right. about historic indie dids to, to numalgo two. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Got a nod from Timo. Okay. Excellent. So the goal of doing this is that if we define this and, 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 and have some, co some working code that does this, then we can consider this as the subject for a community coordinated update. The reason we have to do this is because both sides have to be prepared to compare the newly transitioned Nemalgo 2 peer did um, and consider that when they're lining up and, and looking up uh, who the message is from when they receive a, a message, right? And so that's, that's why this is needed. Um, and, and we can finally bury these things uh, and, and, and never speak of them again. Um, and so uh, that will that will take us a huge step forward that is going to be necessary for uh, for uh, didcom v2 anyway. And so this is but this is something that we can do before we we, we put the, the stamp on AIP3, um, which uh, which we're going to have to do. So so calling this out and, and making this obvious, I think, would be great. It also brings along uh, it's a it's a path for existing implementations that doesn't require uh, you know, killing and recreating everything, uh, which I really like, um, and, and everything can transition using that in a, in a really nice way. Um, anything further, Timo, that I missed? No, uh, maybe just a question then. Um, so in that case, like the did pair tree doesn't make a lot of sense anymore, right? Well, it still does, but my thought was, is that did peer three is about efficiency. This translation, translation from did peer two um, or from the legacy unqualified dids to did peer two is is more about a compatibility issue. So I was going to try and not combine those efforts. Um, if if there's a wiser path here, and Stephen, the one you propose maybe could be one in the fact that if we have a canonicalized way of of making that transition all the way to three, then we could. Um, but but in my head, what I was thinking was, is we would just worry about the move to NumAlgo 2, and then the adoption of NumAlgo 3 as a shortened thing could be handled as a separate effort. And that way, I was trying to minimize the implementation difficulty to, to leave behind the legacy dids as soon as possible. Does that make sense, Timo? Um, yeah, I'll need to read in on like the did pair three uh, like method uh, um, because I would assume you can also just rotate from a did pair two to a did pair one if you think it's too long, right? Yes, you could. the 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 point of of did pair um, the the adoption of did pair one uh, has been um, lower than 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 did pair two, and so one of the options there was to sort sort of figure that out. Part of the discussion about, about method three is how we use like uh, discover features to discover if your uh, if the other party in the relationship is capable of rotating to one of the of the did peer 
uh, the other did peer methods. That's a little bit complicated because you can't just say, well, I support did peer. You have to know I support did peer, which, which numalgo in order to be precise about it. And so uh, we will likely need to expand that a little bit so that there, we have a, a way within the community to discover uh, which, which types of did peer dids may be rotated to both one and, and or three as the case may be. Um, three is pretty simple. It's basically how you create a hashed version of all the information in two that can be, that you can revert to as soon as you're sure the other party has received that full did peer, like you get a message from them using the did. And then if you know that they're capable of it, then you can send the next message uh, with the much shorter form of, of, of did peer three. So yes, but uh, have a look and ask questions. I, I am perfectly open personally. Uh, if you, uh, Timo, you see a smarter way to jump to uh, an adaptation of, of Namalgo three, um, and that would be faster than going through two. I'm, I'm totally cool with there too. The main goal here is to kill the legacy dids dead in a way that is, is, uh, is, is the simplest path forward as possible. That doesn't like lock us into something undesirable in the future. Uh, but, but none of the discussions we've talked about, none of the options we've talked about are really fall into that category. Um, because in did copy two, we'll be able to rotate between did methods, which means that if, if we make this step now, even though it's maybe not uh, perfectly ideal, that uh, as we transition to didcom v2, you'll be able to move to whatever did method you like and maintain existing relationships. So, cool. Okay, um, and, and Timo, you had indicated that, you, uh, that you'll, you'll take a look at that and see if one of your team members can kind of be involved in that process. Is that, is that uh, still okay for you? Yeah. Excellent, thank you for that. Also, thank you for writing this, this code stuff in the first place, because that, that, uh, that gave us a leap forward. <clears throat> okay. Any further conversation about did peer in any way before we jump into the Open Wall Foundation conversation? Okay. Um, uh, we'll need to take some notes here. I, I don't have a super prepared presentation. I hit the wrong thing. Um, I don't have a super prepared uh, uh, slides or anything about this. Um, and so it'll be a little bit conversational. I just got home super late last night. Um, and so I, I haven't uh, I haven't had any time to do that yet, but I think it's important to have this discussion here um, and to outline further discussions or, or other act, sorts of action items that uh, that we want. Um, and so let me let me just outline it briefly. And uh, the rest of you in the room that uh, that have knowledge of and and opinions about things, um, I uh, please please speak up, uh, raise your hand, unmute, um, and and that way we can make sure that the conversation is is as clear and as accurate as possible. Uh, um, so that uh, so that we can have that um, have that. So uh, by way of introduction, the Open Wall Foundation is a new Linux Foundation project. It was organized um, uh, closer to uh, the beginning of the year. It was uh, you know the the process of it was kind of pre-announced, and then there was a long period of figuring out uh, sort of the basics of things, um, and then and then it's now up and running and officially exists. Um, and their mission is to be involved. Uh, this is. Um, the mission is to be involved in the creation of common components for the creation of wallets. Now, this immediately re-raises the wallet versus agent uh, terminology discussion, um, but um, but I believe that their mission of, of uh, what they mean by wallets in, encompasses our vision of agents uh, in the sense that it'll it'll uh, work all the way through. Um, Helen has linked um, the, the that's the foundational documents, right, Helen? That you linked a PDF. Yeah, that's the overview deck that they have on their site. Right. Um, and so their mission uh, is, a, is a, a, exp as explicitly, explicitly stated is a little larger than ours in the sense that uh, that we have never really considered holding, for example, like a a Visa or a MasterCard uh, credential in in, the, in an Aries wallet. That's not something we've directly con contemplated. Um, um, and uh, and so it sort of explicitly states that a lot further than we ever really have in the Aries community, where we have been mostly focused on um, not just verifiable credentials, but other other peer to peer interactions that are a little bit more direct and not necessarily reaching into those other other domains and other opportunities out there. Um, so because of that overlap. Um, there's uh, there's been uh, lots of questions uh, both to the Open Wall Foundation and to to, to us um, as Aries about what we think of as the as the possibilities there. Prior to the to the full establishment of um, of the Open Wall Foundation, we did have a presentation. Uh, Stephen and Al, maybe it was Kareem or Alex. I forget who. I apologize. Um, helped me give a presentation to the Open Wall Foundation to describe. Um, 
of the um, uh, it, to describe what the Ares project was, what it, what it contained, what our mission was, et cetera. And that ended with someone asking the obvious question, well, like, how does this relate to the future of the Open Wallet Foundation? And, and uh, I, the, the answer that I had was a, was a, was a, a little bit of a non-answer in the sense that I, Sam Curran, uh, possess no authority over the community. Um, and so we'd have to discuss whatever it was as a community and, and, and there hadn't really been any, any proposals yet. There aren't any official proposals, but there, um, uh, when I was at um, EIC, I had a, a sit-down conversation with, with two people directly that related. Um, one was Torsten, um, who is working as a technical advisor, I think is the title, to the Open Wallet Foundation. Uh, and he was curious about starting that conversation. And then um, I also spoke with Daniel Goldshire. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correct. Daniel Goldscheider, yes. Scheider, there's a D in there. Yeah. Okay, there's... Uh, Daniel Goldshatter um, uh, about about the possibility, and then uh, and then I've had a lot of conversations interior to Indicio uh, about uh, about what we think about about what's going on. So I've had a lot of conversations this week about this uh, particular topic with a variety of folks, and um, and this is the the point to sort of bring it up and and have this conversation here in the Aries community, um, and so uh, that's the opportunity. Um, to expand that just slightly before I talk about the circumstances, um, the um, there uh, and what we can get into this in, in further discussion, but um, the Open Wall Foundation uh, carries some nice branding along with it. Uh, one of the things that we have struggled with is people misunderstanding the scope of Aries as a project um, and, uh, and and everything else. We've had folks that have been reluctant to get involved uh, doing very agent wallety things because they felt like, well, that's something different than Aries, even though it was like pretty much exactly the same. Um, and uh, and so there's been some confusion uh, and, and some some brand issues there. Um, the um, nothing is perfect, of course. Uh, and so part of the discussion that we can have uh, gets a little bit into you know what the ups and the downs of, of that are. But I wanted to offer, I wanted to mention that um, in addition to uh, you know just the sort of the logistical creating of the Open Wall Foundation. And the overlapping scope that uh, that there are uh, some advantages being discussed along that line. Uh, Andre. Yeah, briefly on the marketing side of things. So I I totally agree to what you say. Uh, I think this having at least having this term wallet in its name is one of the biggest assets uh, in in this in this game already. And uh, we are basically even though none of us I I think are ultimately very very ledger and, and blockchain-y uh, oriented with, with all that we do, have the, the problem or, well, the legacy of being uh, a hyper ledger project. So I think this is kind of uh, for, for people where, where you only have 30 seconds, a deal breaker if they are not into the ledger and Web3 kind of world. And uh, from the marketing side of things, actually, this is, this is a big, big win on the open wallet side. I have a couple of more things to say, but uh, maybe later. I think they'll fall in a little bit later. Uh, thank you, Andre, for that. Um, so let me talk about the circumstances. Um, uh, and this is mostly the logistics of kind of what applies here. And and I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm going to rely on Rai to speak up and correct me should I speak in error or add any additional context necessary. Um, Stephen and I, uh, Stephen Curran and I, have ended up being uh, community leaders uh, in this community. Uh, we've never really had an election here. Um, but I think uh, we have stepped back the slowest uh, when it came to time to ask for volunteers. Um, we have at times, uh, at, you know, more explicitly asked for folks, you know, more folks that would like to be directly involved in the community leadership and haven't uh, had it. We've definitely had people willing to sort of host a meeting in, in our absence, but, um, but, but no one has been super interested in sort of stepping into one of our roles. I, that is still open, uh, I, I need to clarify in the sense that if you would like to get involved, we would love to have you involved. Um, but the effect of that is that Stephen and I directly uh, have no authority. We cannot speak on behalf of this group. We, we are not elected to do so. It's not in any sort of a charter that, that lets us do that. We are willing uh, coordinators of the community um, but uh, but I, I need to clarify that um, just to just to make that really uh, obvious, which is why I can't speak on on behalf of the Aries community about anything. I can I can guess, uh, but there I have I have zero authority when it actually comes to that sort of a thing, which means that uh, that uh, anything we do as a community um, would benefit from 
us agreeing as a community to to any sorts of changes or adjustments that we want. That is true both of a potential move to the Open Wallet Foundation, but also um, any adjustments that we wish to make to, to, make to the, uh, the ARIES community itself. Should we want to uh, adjust and uh, a, a published you know, mission statement or scope of the group, or should we want to do anything else of that nature, it requires us as a community to, to come together in that, in that fashion. Um, now, there's probably someone's named a law about this, but there's a lot of folks that are peripheral, um, that don't speak up a lot, but definitely have interest in the group, and, and everyone's opinion counts here. Um, sometimes when we have something like a vote, lots of people abstain. Um, I want to highlight that if you choose to abstain from a vote because either option is, is fine, that's okay, but we really don't want you to abstain because you don't feel like you're a contributor here. If you are here, uh, or you're in the community, even if you're unable to attend the meetings directly, your vote work counts and we, we care. Um, and so please don't not participate because you feel like you haven't done something worthy of like being a participant in this organization or, or, the, or, or what's going on there. We definitely care and, they're, and, and no one's gonna look at you and say, well, like, wow, you, your vote doesn't count because of X. That's, that's not how this works. Uh, we've, we've gotten uh, for years, have gotten along quite well as a community figuring this sort of stuff out. Um, and, uh, and I don't think any of that necessarily needs to change. Um, there are procedures in the charter for resolving uh, stuck disputes that involve um, uh, you know, going higher than the ARIES project itself um, to Hyperledger. Again, that, that is probably very rarely invoked at the Hyperledger perspective, and we've certainly never done so. Um, there are mechanisms to unstuck stuck things, um, unstick stuck things, but that hasn't been something that we've really, we've really gone to uh, so far. Um, and so, um, anyway, uh, I wanted to highlight sort of the mechanics of what's really going on here and what our options are. Um, and so what I, I intend to do with, the, with our remaining time is, uh, is, is hear from uh, the voices of those in the community um, and opinions about what's going on um, so that we can have some context. I don't anticipate us uh, putting out a formal declaration today and voting on it, uh, but that sort of a thing could happen in the future um, should we um, should we need to do so. I'll also clarify that um, because not everyone with an interest in the community can, can attend this, uh, this time slot, um, then, uh, then any vote would need to allow for time uh, for us to circulate uh, you know, the, the, the vote and, and receive feedback um, from, uh, from everyone in the community, even those that you know, like listen to the calls because they're like asleep right now and things like that. So, um, so there, at no point, I think, will we actually have a vote on a call that then is immediately effective at the end of the call because of that, uh, because of that requirement. Um, so uh, those are the, the logistics of how we get to make, uh, have this conversation and make this, uh, these, these sorts of decisions. Um, any, any corrections or, or clarifications uh, necessary there? Sure. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the mechanics. Um, so if this occurred, uh, if this vote was approved, uh, there are a lot of things that I don't know. The, the trademark uh, for Aries is with Hyperledger. It's Hyperledger Aries. So I don't know if the project would need to be renamed. I, I don't know. Um, I also... Uh, o OWF is an unfunded project, so there would be uh, no support for any funded activities, which would be my time or any money spent on GitHub or any money spent at all. Um, so that's the, the current status of that. And I am uh, actually forbidden from working on OWF stuff uh, by Daniela because it's unfunded and she doesn't want me spending time on unfunded stuff. Um, so even if there was a vote to move, I, I don't know what the mechanics of that would look like in terms of would it be a fork and then the old project would be retired and renamed? Uh, I don't know. Thanks for that context, right? Uh, Daniela was mentioned. Daniela is the executive director of the Hyperledger um, Foundation. So so she is, uh, or Hyperledger, I don't think foundations are the name now that I say it out loud. Um, uh, and so uh, Daniela is uh, is b both aware of and, uh, and, and is a, in, in, um, well, well, can help sort some of those issues out in particular. Uh, Stephen, your hand. Um, I was going to say, I, I think something like this would involve funding things like um, a superstar like Rye 
contributing or being able to participate in the project and other things like that. I think that would be a prerequisite as well. Um, so, uh, well, I, I understand the current state is that I, I, I don't think that is necessarily the end state. No, I, in their budget, uh, they've got a published budget where they, they outline the types of staff that they are, um, that they intend to involve. And I definitely know that I'm, uh, I, I mean, it doesn't say Rye, but, it, but someone of that role, um, that, that could, that could make that work. So, oh, uh, the other thing that to mention, I, I mentioned this briefly two weeks ago, um, uh, and on, uh, Andre linked to this in the chat, but their, um, the Linux foundation has organized the, the digital trust initiative, which is a, a collection of, uh, projects that relate to trust, including uh, Hyperledger, uh, the Open Wall Foundation, uh, the DIFF, and Trust Over IP are the organizations that uh, that fall under that umbrella. And so that sort of exists as a thing, uh, but there's not really like a separate staff there or a separate organization at this point. It's it's it, at this point kind of a uh, sort of a, a, a logical grouping or a um, that can be used for for marketing, etc. Of the of the sort of the larger concept. Um, thank you, Andre, for that. Um, so uh, Stephen jumped us a little bit into the challenges, um, and so uh, I think we should continue on with that discussion. Um, and, and we can talk about advantages here too. This does not have to be just a, a downside conversation, but a discussion of the ups and downs I think is is kind of what is is interesting here. Um, and uh, I, in, in that vein, would like to hear from folks with opinions, uh, positive and negative, about about this uh, this particular move. Uh, Andre, your hands up. Yeah, maybe maybe one aspect uh, that probably has not uh, been dis discussed before. Um, I'm, I mean, we're so full transparency here. I'm not one of the active members here in this group here. You know that my, my team is working uh, with you and uh, on uh, Hyperledge Indian areas kind of things. So we are involved, but I'm I'm not a regular member of this of this call here. So nevertheless, uh, we are founding member uh, of um, Trust of IP. Uh, as well as Open Wallet Foundation. So full disclosure here so that uh, for everyone to be on the same page. Um, I think Open Wallet Foundation has a very interesting ambition level. So they clearly want to provide a working, productively used code that has relevance in regulatory environments such as the EU digital identity wallet. I think... Um, if you look at the, the people who are, who are um, in the driver's seat there and, and driving things uh, across, um, have this ambition level, uh, not for bad reasons. I think they, they have very good reasons to have that because they already um, are in liaison with the European Commission. And um, I think some of the stakeholders are, are basically uh, in constant alignment on this stuff. So. I want to pose this as an advantage for, for us as, uh, as the ARIES community to basically potentially become part of this overall regulatory stream that's happening in the EU. You know that the EU architecture and reference framework did not include DITCOM. I think this is uh, something that needs to be rectified at some point. And if we basically bring uh, cool ARIES uh, features into working wallets, even in this large scale pilots that are currently ongoing, that would be uh, a clear uh, win for the community and uh, and demonstrate the viability of the stuff that Aries has already created. So maybe this kind of an intro statement from me and I'm, I'm really curious what you have to say. I'm very bullish about this, bringing this together because I think this, this is needed and overdue and now might be a good time to actually uh, get it going. Uh, thank you, Andre. I'm going to strictly follow order of hands as presented by Zoom. Uh, so Helen is next. Hey, thank you, Sam. Um, I had a question. I don't know if anybody on this call can answer that, but in terms of funding thus far from sponsors, it said in the 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 overview for the project that deck there that I had posted that they had three hundred organizations that were interested in being part of OWF. I count about I think forty ish, a little less, maybe forty one plus or minus, um, currently current sponsors. Um, I think they're, the budget, the draft budget that was roaming around was something like $7 million in order to do all the things that Andre just, you know, kind of described. Does anybody know what the status is of that budget? And if we were to kind of dissolve the established connection we have with Hyperledger, is there kind of a, you know, that the certainty 
um, of sponsorship that would keep the o OWF running, you know, beyond one or two or three years. Um, so I don't know that we can find that if anyone has those answers, great. But the other thing that we can do with our time here is is enumerate the questions uh, that we that we think are relevant to the the furthering of this. So so even if even if no one here has the answer, bringing up the question I think is a, is a useful activity for us to do. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it, I mean, I'm just from the perspective of uh, somebody who's been involved with a community project that was at um, Hyperledger um, Public Health and Hyperledger Public Health went from a funded project to a non-funded project. It was um, it was a difficult transition <laughs> to try to sort it out and get people in the right meetings again and you know keep that continuity of pro uh, progress. So I guess I would just want to know, again, know about the funding, know what their runway is, you know, if, if we can, you know, count on this. I mean, Hyperledger has been around for a, a minute now, but, um, you know, just just wanted to see that. Um, also, I just wanted to point out just the, again, Hyperledger being the established project that it is with um the, um, the 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 amount of following that it has it's in my view as a marketer i'm not a i'm not a a contributor a code contributor or anything like that but you know these these projects live and die by participation by you guys by people showing up and and working in you know in part of being part of the community and right now i mean i'm counting 80,000 followers on twitter for hyperledger 43,000 on linkedin uh, another 80,000 get the newsletter each week, uh, 40 or 4,100 on Discord. Um, you know, there, there's a huge following, a huge, you know, just audience um, to to um, draw from. I mean, I think if several hundred showed up for the Aries work, uh, workshops that we, that, uh, you know, we were part of. And I would just want to make sure that we are still offering and, and reaching that level of people um, and that level of community, um, it, you know, if this move were to happen. Uh, thank you, Helen. And by the way, I'm taking notes here as best effort, which means that if you would like to correct things, uh, either that you said or someone else said, like, please do. Like, I'm just I'm just trying to capture uh, some of our stuff. Uh, we will also have the transcript and the recording, of course, um, but it's it's helpful to have some sort of high level-ish things to, to organize our, our, our work. Uh, Timo is next. Uh, yeah, um, I have a few points. Um, um, I think, um, first of all, I think, yeah, what we got like from High Pledge and the support that we've had, I think that is really great. And I'm not sure if that is something we can get with Open Wallet Foundation, but that's mainly because I'm not familiar with how Open Wallet Foundation works and all the processes behind it. Um, I do think that um, there is an opportunity here um and there's a few things i think in um i think one is that the air rights standards and the code being co-located and managed by the same organization i think um um or like under the same github or or that i think has proven to be sometimes um difficult because people think air rights is just what the implementations are and there's sometimes too much overlap like what are the implementations and what are the standards and that has i think limited its adoption outside of the code that is being developed under Hyperledger, while standards are also meant to be implemented by anyone that wants it. Um, I think for us also, it's like with, for example, our framework JavaScript is that we've been, like we're working on digital decentralized self-sovereign, however we call it, identity, um, which um, we started out by mainly focusing on RIs, but, um, with all the initiatives going on, like there's multiple standards, multiple protocols, multiple technologies to support. And we've now been starting to build like open ID uh, stuff. We may want to add um, um, uh, MDL credentials, uh, whatever. Um, so um, for like the code that we're now developing, I think goes beyond just ARIS um, and it's called ARIS. And I'm not sure if like that is the best marketing for the framework in the end, because it may uh, let people think, oh, this is an ARIS project. Well, in the end, it's an agent implementation, like as like uh, DITCOM uh, agent or whatever agent. Um, so I think that's my main two points. So I really see an opportunity here. I'm just not sure if like is, is Open Wallet um, the place to go or what should happen. Um, I will add just a little bit of commentary. Um, the 
because uh, Didcom, I don't think this fully answers to be clear, Timo, but because um, Didcom was sort of taken up over in the Decentralized Identity Foundation, um, that already has started a move of some of the things that Aries implements uh, outside of, of the Aries project directly. And so one of the possibilities, uh, perhaps alongside, perhaps independent of an open wallet foundation move um, is to is to shift the, the standards development like protocol design, et cetera, out of Aries over to the, the existing Didcom working group um, uh, or the, the user group over there, um, which does have open requirements. There's no payment required for that particular group. The IPR concerns are different than a spec itself. And so that helps. Um, but the um, uh, that group already exists. So that would be that could be a possibility either alongside a code move to, to OWF or, or independently. I will mention that OWF has uh, explicitly stated um, that they do not want to create standards, but want to implement standards. So if if there was to be a, a move, then the the basically the um, what lives in RFCs, both as conceptual and 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 technical dis, you know, uh, designs of things um, would would not find a home there. Um, and uh, and would and would need a place to live. Um, they could live historically speaking inside of uh, inside of Hyperledger, but if if, if there's to be active work uh, moving forward on those, then someplace like that 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 organization of the diff would be useful. Um, the other thing is more of a question is that um, and Timo, you mentioned that you were you know working on specs designed elsewhere, um, and and the question of beyond Aries. Um, we it's been a long time since we've had a conversation about the scope of Aries. Um, and so one of the things that uh, that may merit some discussion is what is the scope of Aries and what is the perception of the scope of Aries? Because those two things are different, even if they're even if they're like one is correct, the perception might still be a particular problem and, and there might be activities uh, to um, to correct that or to figure it out even with a transition or without a transition. So there's there's definitely um, uh, things there to, to discuss. Uh, Kareem. Yeah, I think you you basically already uh, said my question, but that was my question. Like, even especially if we're gonna move protocol design um, and creation out of Aries, uh, to then what what is Aries? Like, that is a uh, is it then just a bunch of frameworks that do uh, identity related stuff, or um, what is what is left? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, an interrupt pro profile could, could be there's uh, so that's a good question and let me let me talk about this from a historical perspective. <laughs> um, I've I've been around a minute. Um, the um, the there Aries has become three things. There is a collection of RFCs that can contain design stuff. There's code that matches uh, those RFCs, and there is. Um, uh, and then we also have uh, the errors in our profiles that, you know, where we've got two minted and we're talking about a third. Um, and so uh, there's there's those three things that are kind of Aries, right? Um, and so um, the, um, in defense of having the, the code co-located with the design, at the time we were trying to figure a lot of the stuff out early, early in the Aries world, there wasn't a place to do this other conversation. We, there wasn't an obvious home for that conversation in, in the diff. The trust of RP didn't exist. Open Wallet Foundation, of course, didn't exist. And so we ended up having, we identified problems to solve and, and, and given the lack of any place else to do them, we solved them within Aries. Not just because that's historically true doesn't mean at all that it should be true moving forward, but that's kind of why it ended up where it was. And and as things became interesting in other communities like Didcom v2, for example, that was extracted as a conversation and moved outside to um, to a, another another discussion um, uh, out, outside of Aries. Um, and then, of course, we are now have efforts to uh, move to and adopt Didcom v2 um, as an example of implementing, you know, uh, specs created elsewhere. Um, and so. Um, and so the, the, the question is, uh, what is Aries is certainly one that we're going to need to more precisely and loudly answer, should this, uh, this move to open wallet foundation not be reached directly. Um, that's something that we definitely need to, uh, to focus on that we have kind of ignored for a while. We mostly just been sort of heads down building stuff, which is great, but, um, but the, the project itself, you know, could probably use a little bit of sort of top level attention uh, from that perspective, um, which, which could really help. Um, with that commentary, Steve, your hands up. Um, yeah, thank you. This is an interesting proposal. Take 
takes me a little by surprise, given what I know about Open Wallet Foundation. I'm curious about um, what what the genesis of this proposal is. Um, what I understand is Aries um, develops standards and writes code, and Open Wallet Foundation doesn't want to write standards but wants to implement them. It it seems like Open Wallet. Um, incorporating Aries code and, and furthering that is of general interest, but it I, I'm curious what what the benefit is to Aries being hosted through a, a wallet development organization. As it, it just seems like an interesting. I, are we playing on their popularity right now, or what? What's the motivation, really, for doing this and dividing up Aries spec and code into different organizations as opposed to where it is right now? Most of what we've heard so far, um, and, and I'm curious for uh, opinions would be good here. Most of the opinions that I've heard so far uh, are around the. Uh, maybe the unfortunate association with, with ledgers being in Hyperledger um, and the uh, and the potential for the name of Open Wallets to sort of draw a little more clarity around uh, around what kind of we do. This again uh, gets a little bit into the agent versus wallet discussion and exactly what is what. Um, but uh, from a certain perspective, if you were uh, in in my view, if you're going to hold up Hyperledger and Open Wallet Foundation and ask which of them works on like. Uh, you know, agents or wallets or whatever, you're probably going to land on Open Wallet Foundation, even if neither one of them is a perfect match. And so I think that's one of sort of the obvious things there. Um, but opinions. So, uh, yeah, just to follow on on that one, just as a real practical matter, um, we we kind of started with Sovereign, then Hyperledger, then Diff, then Trust over IP, and now Open Wallet Foundation. It seems like whenever there's a new problem to solve, we want to stand up a new organization, and then that requires even small businesses to pay somewhere between five and fifty thousand dollars a year to participate and to to be a member of that organization. Um, and so wanting to participate in the full ecosystem, whether or not you support ledgers, but all the way from uh, wallet uh, standards to verifiable credential standards to communication standards kind of makes it so that organizations wanting to participate in the full spectrum Companies now, even small companies now have to join all of these organizations with all sorts of fees. And so it it seems interesting to me that when there's a problem to solve, the answer is a new foundation as opposed to a retooling or addition to to the ones that we currently have. And And so from that perspective, I think we're spreading ourselves as a SSI DI industry fairly broad across different organizations. And when, I think what we're gonna end up having is people that wanna participate are gonna now have to financially pick and choose what they participate in. And I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way to bring everything more cohesively as opposed to segmenting things across different foundations. Uh, Andre. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that this is this is now more the opportunity to bring balance to the force, right? I think we could basically um, now allocate all this code creation activities around wallets and agents and um, replace all the governance and and kind of standards work somewhere else so that we concentrate on this and and what I what I think is obviously this is all always stakeholder game, right? So there's some people who come from from more the open ID world, uh, having having uh, created a lobby around OWF, and I think they they will they will have a keen interest to make it work, and I think the story will get much better on on all ends if we team up and join forces. And I have the clear feeling that we have have now 
achieved a state where where more collabor collaboration is in fact uh, happening and people start running even though coming from different domains in the same direction and i i never had this feeling before i i think i had it as the strongest first at eic where we saw all the, the momentum with all the identity access uh, management established uh, companies uh, now trying to be uh, um, uh, decentralized uh, uh, from one second to the next. So I think uh, this is now happening. And if we as as the originators of this whole decentralized identity movement want to have our, our stake and, and value in the game, I think teaming up now um, is a cool thing for all of us to do. Okay, so logistically speaking, we're at the end of the hour. Um, there's, I think there's two ways we can proceed forward with this conversation. Um, we're likely all scheduled past it today, and so continuing is not ideal. Um, but clearly, this is something we need more discussion on. Uh, one of the things that we could do is carry it forward to next week and, and try to, to shove other ma matters aside so that we have more of the call to talk about it. The other thing that we could do is schedule a special topic call. Scheduling a new call is always a super fun challenge, um, but we could allocate something more along the lines of two hours, um, which could be beneficial for, for such a complex topic. Um, is there any uh, obvious preference uh, in the group on how we should proceed to, to continue the conversation? Um, given an obvious preference, uh, let's continue this to next week. Um, what uh, and, and then what, what we'll try to do is really rip through the beginning stuff as fast as we can so that we can rejoin the conversation and dedicate more time to it. In the meantime, what I think we should do is create probably a special wiki page on this that we can update uh, sort of session to session um, that I will try to organize from our notes here. Um, and then I will attempt to circulate before next Wednesday um, uh, this sort of a thing. Um, I also think that we could leverage some of the discussion features um, inside of um, inside of the ARIES RFCs repository to address uh, a handful of these topics. And I will attempt to circulate those as well so that we can end up with more conversations that are happening. And that way we can spend our meeting times more summarizing rather than calling them directly. So I will attempt to facilitate that this, uh, that this week um, so that we can uh, round out the variety of conversations that we need and, and, and gather input from, from everyone on the various aspects there. Um, and so, uh, I, I'm grateful for everyone coming. I wish we in, just instantly had another hour that we could spend on this, um, but uh, but I appreciate everyone coming. Um, please watch the uh, the uh, the Discord uh, Aries channel for any sort of uh, links or other things that we could do to to be involved uh, prior to next week. And we will spend uh, the majority of of next week talking about this issue as well, um, and have, hopefully having advanced some in the meantime. Uh, so thank you all for coming. I know there's opinions and things brought up that we didn't hear yet, um, and, and I appreciate your patience in that, um, and we will see you all next week. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Everyone.